Oh, and let's see if I'm live. <laughs> I sure hope so. In the Continental Club. Yes, and in Janome Sewing Machines. So, the Continental Club. Yes, and yes. in Janome Sewing Machines. Oh, volume sounds great. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, yay. You know, I always have to double check. I'm a one-man show here. Uh, so, hello. You'll see my beautiful CM17. There we are. And now you'll see my beautiful Marilyn, because yes, I am here from my palatial estate in Collingwood, Ontario, Canada. So yes, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad I see notifications right away. You know, sometimes there's a delay, but uh, again, I always like to go on a little bit early so everybody can jump on and get settled. And oh yes, I see Sheila is here and Debbie is here. Wonderful. And hello, happy Friday, everyone. Can you believe it? Almost at the end of June, but wow, uh, it's now officially summer, so I hope it is wonderful weather where you are. Uh, yes, I wanted to get out a little bit of sun today, but it's kind of raining here, but uh, any day without snow is fine by me. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, wonderful. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Oh, and Cheryl's here. Hello. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining me today. It is great to be back with you live in the Genomi Continental Club. Yes, my name is Michael Smith, the National Education Manager of Genomi Canada. And yes, I'm thrilled to be back with you all again, sharing more of the Genomi love specifically on that Continental M17, but you know, it also applies to the CM7. Uh, oh, and Nancy is here, lovely, hello. Oh, and Mary Ellen, hello. Uh, but you know, these little th uh, threading tips and tricks that I'm gonna share with you can apply to any sewing machine. It doesn't matter which model you have. It's pretty much all applicable uh, to every machine out there. But again, specifically, we're always um, anxious to share the, uh, very eager to share the, uh, you know, Janome love of the CM17, especially. It's such a big, wonderful machine. So yes, thank you everyone for joining me. So let's flip around and get started because as always, I've got so much information to share and there's never enough time. <laughs> so I will flip around. Ooh, there we go. And then, yes, you'll see my fabulous CM17 here. And I wanted to go over some little tips and tricks uh, with threading specifically, you know, because recently, uh, about uh, ooh, two weeks ago, we were at Jeremy Canada was at Quilt Canada, which is our largest uh, national quilting show with the Canadian Quilters Association. We were out in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and, you know, Janome always donates uh, sewing machines, you know, to the uh, classrooms. And as we were going over some of these threading tips and tricks to help people, again, have a better experience uh, with their sewing. So again, this will pretty much apply to every Janome machine out there, but specifically I'll show it on my fabulous CM17. And what that is, is the correct spool cap can make all the difference. Now in your instruction manual, you will find what is included with your machine. And almost every, I believe every Janome machine will come with this big spool cap, the large spool cap, but almost uh, most of the other ones will come with several. In fact, there's the medium one, and then we've got, oops, uh, the medium one. And then, you know, machines like here, the CM17, you know, we've got two, two large, two medium, and then there's our little special spool cap. So these three spool caps Janome has, and again, they're included, the big one is included in every machine, but then a lot of them will have the large or the medium. And then the, again, the CM17, we're really spoiled. We have three of each, or, or two of each of these three. So we have six spool caps in total. So the correct spool cap will make all the difference because, you know, these spool pins, and here on the CM17, Yes, we've got these nice extra wide spool pins. The spool pin, you know, was necessary to keep our spool of thread, but oh, that spool pin can really create a lot of problems if we don't uh, address it correctly. And this is what the spool cap is for, is to basically eliminate or bypass that spool pin so the thread does not get wrapped around it. And that's so easily done, especially 
This is a metallic thread and it is so wiry and tightly wound. So it's so easy just to get wrapped around that spool pin. Uh, and when you, you know, your machine, you'll be sewing along at high speeds. You're not even paying attention. And all of a sudden, jam, the machine will jam. Your bobbin holder will spin and you'll be cursing your machine and you'll say, what's wrong with my machine? And it, most of the time, it is not the machine. If you trace it back to, it's the thread maybe wrapped around the spool pin maybe you didn't have the correct spool cap so it can make all the difference so in a big uh spool like this this fabulous madeira katana thread for example nice and big we basically the rule of thumb is to use a spool cap larger than the top of the spool itself so that way when the spool is on the spool pin if it's and this applies to if it's horizontal or vertical but can you see like there, that spool pin causes that thread to like stick out a little bit. So it's not going to get wrapped around that spool pin at all. So it really will make a difference. Again, it doesn't matter if your spool is horizontal or vertical. The correct spool cap, again, is really going to make a big difference. So you're going to bypass that spool pin altogether. Now here, this is one of the mini King cones. Uh, this happens to be Madeira. Um, they're ultra bright. Uh, polyester embroidery thread, but again, any mini King cone there. Again, the top of the cone. We're not necessarily worried about the width of the spool down here. It's the top of the cone, the top of the spool, that the spool cap has to be larger. So it's perfectly fine to use this medium size one in this case. Because again, you'll see it completely bypasses that spool pin. So it doesn't matter if we're sewing at 1300 stitches per minute with our CM17 or embroidering at 1200 stitches per minute. We know that thread is not going to wrap around that spool pin because that spool cap is larger than the top of the spool itself. Now, when we get into this little special spool cap, I sometimes see it put on the spool of thread like that, like a little crown. And it's actually supposed to go the other way because sometimes you see the way that this uh, spool cap is constructed with those little edges there. The thread could get caught on those edges. The spool cap is supposed to go down like that, but you'll see, oh, in this mini king cone, it won't fit. So no, we don't want to use the mini king or the, the uh, special spool cap in this mini king cone. Instead, again, we can use the medium size or we could use the large spool cap and not have to worry about it. Uh, here in this larger king cone, then yes, this special spool cap fits in perfectly. That's how the special spool cap should be used. That those, again, kind of rough edges of that spool cap are hidden within the spool. So it's nice and smooth. And again, it doesn't matter if this is used uh, vertically or horizontally, uh, depending on what your machine is. Again, here for the CM17, we have those vertical spool pins, uh, but again, it doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. That's how the special spool cap is supposed to go inside. Now, sometimes I see, again, where we take our regular spool cap and we invert it like this, uh, depending on what your spool of thread is. But there may be, again, a little gap in between, and we don't want any little gaps in between. So that's where that special spool cap really comes in handy. And again, we're spoiled for choice here on the CM17 that we have all three sizes included. So there's definitely a spool cap for every spool of thread out there. Now, if you do happen to have a really big cone, for example, because again, we've got these extra wide spool pins, we can use giant cones like this. Well, we're gonna completely bypass that spool pin entirely. So we don't need to worry about putting a cap here. And you know, here, ooh, all my thread. <laughs> and you know, remember we do have the 
uh, the cone adapters, when you get things like, oh, the fabulous spool stand that is available for the CM17, it comes with these spool adapters. So you can get those here for your larger uh, cones, the cone adapters. Uh, you can get them, for example, in the uh, big spool stand, which I'll just quickly show. Ooh, there's that beautiful spool stand box. And yes, it comes with the cone adapters for their five cones and these thread nets. Now, these thread nets can uh, also be available in a separate blister pack, as are the um, cone adapters. But again, they're all in the spool stand box. Now, these thread nets can also make a big difference in your thread delivery. Again, especially these metallic threads. And if you've got any slippery threads, all oh, those monofilament threads, again, are so slippery. That's what these thread nets are for, that they help you. Again, it just kind of slows down that slippery thread. So this way, look at that. It just feeds off beautifully. And then again, in this case, I would use this larger spool cap on top. So again, we know for sure, look at that. I am not going to wrap that thread around that spool pin whatsoever. And the cool thing is by using the thread net, again, the thread just kind of relaxes a little bit uh, and then it's not going to pool and puddle and come off that cone too quickly. Look at this thread here on my fabulous spool stand. So this is what, ooh, the spool stand looks like. Shall I give you a little tour of my sewing table, my sewing area? There is the spool stand, fits on the, oops, fits on the back of your machine. Five spools, so great, especially when we're embroidering. We can load up all of our thread colors there. So when we use that uh, spool, oops, I don't want to get caught. When we use that spool stand, or again, even if we're using the regular spool pins of our machine, can you see this is some Madeira, ooh, again, some Madeira Ultra Bright Thread. And again, the twist of the thread is often your culprit. When you have some threading woes or some machine woes, it's not the machine, it's the thread, specifically the twist of the thread. Now, do you have especially a brand new spool? Like, I just set this spool here on the spool pin, and look at all this thread that just came off, and just puddle. You see how easy? Oh, look! It puddles right around the spool stand, and wham! If I try to sew my machine is going to jam, the bobbin holder is likely going to spin, and we're going to, again, curse the machine that something is wrong with the machine. But look how easy it is for that thread to wrap around that spool pin. So when you get a brand new spool of thread, I know a lot of people do not want to waste thread, but I will often uh, end up winding, and now I'm going to get all caught in thread. <laughs> uh, I will often end up take off some of that thread because they're often so full of thread. So I know no one wants to waste any thread, but that can sometimes help if you untwist it a little bit. You take off a little bit of that thread. Now, what can also help, again, the thread net over this will really help. So that way... Uh, it's not going to pool and puddle around the bottom. Now, what I sometimes do, though, again, this could be on our regular spool pins as well as on the thread stand. For these little stubby spools, I like doing this. I invert the spool cap and I make like a little shelf. And then I, again, top it for sure. We need to top it with another spool pin. And then here in the thread stand, isn't that cool? Whoops. Isn't that ooh, cool? Let's get way up there. There we go. So it's in the, whoops, in the guide. There we go. It's in the guide of the thread mast. I can lock that little door so my thread isn't going to come up out of the top of the spool stand. Ooh, I'm trying to avoid the shaky camera work. <laughs> uh, ooh, there we go. So then do you see, then by having this little shelf of the spool cap, well, that definitely helps my thread. Again, I'm completely bypassing that spool pin. So we're bypassing it because of the spool cap, 
but also if I am a little hesitant or worried that, oh, maybe my thread, because it's so tightly wound, you'll see the curl of the thread here, maybe, uh, you'll see like it's so tightly wound that it will sometimes still, you know, want to curl around that spool pin. So by putting your little smaller spools up like this, you're completely eliminating that spool cap. Now, something else I also do with making that little shelf there, do you ever have, because, you know, here on the Continental M7 and the CM17, you know how we have our low bobbin indicator. And many of you say, I hate that because I've just got that little bit, that's all that there is, that little bit of bobbin thread left, and I don't want to waste that thread. So, not to fear, this is what I do. <laughs> Here is my fabulous Janome bobbin saver. We have room for 66 regular Janome J bobbins. And this is what I do on all, I use these Janome pre-wounds a lot for my regular sewing. And what I do, this little bit of bobbin thread, again, it's not much, it's usually about 16 inches, maybe 20 inches, it depends on the weight of the thread. But uh, I save all those little bits of thread. So what I do is then I use this bobbin thread for my needle thread. So this is where I do this little inversion here, making that little shelf. Again, I cap it. In this case, I'd probably use that medium size one. I don't think I would need to use that big one. Again, medium size, cap it. This way you can use your bobbin thread. There we go, in your needle. So isn't that cool? That way you are using up every little bit of thread. And specifically what I use it for, this is my jelly roll rug that I am making. So these little seams, again, just seaming my jelly roll together, or if I'm doing binding strips and I'm just seaming them together, this is what I save all these little bits of bobbin thread for, is just this little bit and sure, I'm changing my needle thread a lot, but it really doesn't matter. That way I know I'm using up all my thread. And again, it works beautifully using your bobbin thread when you invert your little spool cap like that. So that's a little tip and trick. <laughs> uh, but yes, specifically threading then, when we're getting ready to thread our machine, you know, we always recommend this two-handed threading. So as my thread comes off the spool and up to, ooh, up to our telescoping uh, thread stand here and it comes down. Now here on our CM17, we have these two thread guides. These are just guides, they're not tensions. So although when we thread our CM17 needle thread, they're recommending this number two uh, guide without the box around it. The one with the box is recommended for the bobbin. But when I'm going to thread my needle, I end up using both of these. Again, they're guides, they're not tensions. Particularly when I use metallic threads, either in regular sewing or in embroidery. Again, that metallic thread that can be so tightly wound uh, for any particularly, you know, difficult uh, finicky thread, as I call them, I like using the thread in both of these guides because that just helps kind of relax the thread a little more, uh, flattens it out a little more before it gets to the tension itself. So again, it, they're just guides. So I end up using both, again, just to help flatten that thread out, just to relax it a little bit more before it gets into the tension. Now, when we do our threading, again, as a little tip, we always like to do two-handed threading. So you take off enough thread to get down to your needle, and then I like putting my finger right there. So that way, no more thread is going to come off the spool. Then as I go to thread my machine around, you know, guide number three and four and go down to five and then I have to move camera <laughs> and then go, you know, down and around. We want to, again, our finger would be up at the top of the machine the entire time. 
And as we move our hands around to, and again, I'll keep my hand away, but it would be normally up at the top of the machine there. So as we come down to guide number five and up and around, before we hit this take-up lever, which I love on the CM17 that it is exposed because this take-up lever is another area where if you have any jamming, your bobbin holder spins, the thread, the first place I check is, did the thread come out of the take-up lever? And then the second place I check, did the thread wrap around the spool pin? So before we thread this take-up lever, we wanna make sure to hit needle down and up to cycle our needle up to the highest position. When we go to use this automatic needle threader, regardless of what machine we have, if the needle is not up in the highest position, the needle threaders won't work. So you, again, your needle threader doesn't work. You blame your machine. It's maybe because your needle's not in the highest position. So as we go down to, again, number five, and again, we've got our hand, uh, the right hand in my case would be up at the top of the machine, stopping this thread from coming off the spool. We want a little bit of tension on that thread. So as I come up, to the take-up lever and pull it. I actually like to give it a little tug forward to make sure the thread comes all the way to the front of the take-up lever. Because we're all in a hurry uh, doing the one-handed threading, uh, especially sometimes you don't pull this thread all the way to the front of the take-up lever and it's not quite in that guide. So as you start sewing, it'll fall out of the take-up lever and again, your machine's gonna jam. So then we come down to number seven, and in this case, this cute little sticker that we have for our CM17 tells us to go to number eight is right here. Number nine is the little guide over the needle, and we wanna make sure to pull that thread right ooh, over to the left. And again, when we have our finger up on the top of the machine, again, we can really pull that thread over to the left all the way to the left of that guide. And this is where, and again, in the classes at the uh, Quilt Canada, this is where people were getting uh, into trouble a little bit. They weren't getting the thread all the way over to the left, so it can make all the difference. Then we're gonna pull that thread into the little jaw, as I call it, and then hang up the thread, you know, available on almost every Janome sewing machine, from front to back is a thread holder from back to front is a thread cutter. So we can just hold our thread up there and then now lock the machine. Now, what sequence you do this, again, is, is up to you and it maybe differs from the manual as far as when to lock your machine and uh, all of that. The main thing to remember, you know, do whatever procedure works for you, but the main thing for me is before I thread that take-up lever, we're going to do needle down and up to make sure the take-up lever, the needle is in the highest position. And then what I love in the CM17, we cannot activate that needle threader button until the machine is locked. So it's a fail-safe to help us avoid damaging that needle threader. So now we click that little needle threader button and ooh, I'll do it from here. There we go. And beautiful, there it is. Now the thread is still hung up here on our, uh, in the little jaw and it's still hung up the back of the needle threader. Now, which is totally fine. So, uh, as a precaution, trust me, ask me how I know this. <laughs> As a precaution, we definitely want to take the thread off of that little pin of the needle threader, pull it through to the back of the machine. Now we can unlock the machine and put the thread under the foot. And again, we can hold it up on that side thread holder. We definitely want to take the thread off the pin of the needle threader before you start sewing, again, ask me how I know that. Because when you don't, that puts a little bit extra uh, tension on your little needle threader there. And as you start sewing, or in my case, I was embroidering and was in too much of a hurry and I hit go to embroider. Well, didn't that tension on that thread 
pull my needle threader like out of alignment. So when I went to go use my needle threader again, oh, it didn't work because I had thrown it out of alignment because I didn't take the thread off that little pin. So definitely take the thread off the little pin before you start sewing. So another little tip. So also when we get to start sewing, here we go, we're going to start sewing. Did you know our fabulous patented needle plates here, all three of them, the zigzag uh, universal needle plate that I have in, this is the straight stitch with that center hole, uh, but this also applies to the HP needle plate, which will say HP high performance. And again, the HP needle plate has that little uh, center or hole in the left hand side but right here on our patented needle plate right across the middle uh well not quite the middle of the needle plate but where the needle opening is it's kind of up at the upper middle uh right across this big long mark do you see there their patented needle plates every needle plate has that mark so that is suggested where we're going to start sewing. So if we line up our fabric to that horizontal line, I'll just drop the foot, and before we start sewing, we then do needle down. So the needle starts in the down position, and it's just above when we align. Oh, I don't know if I can zoom in. It doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to be working here on my phone. Uh, but yes, when we start sewing, again, the needle's in the down position, and by aligning our fabric with that straight line on the needle plate, the fabric is just before the needle. So then as we start sewing, and again, our thread is up here at the side. So as we just start sewing with, um, we're gonna take the first stitch comes up and then down in the fabric. Sometimes what happens, if you start with your fabric at the edge and then you put the needle down into the fabric as your first stitch, that's what's often punching your fabric into the needle plate. Uh, particularly if you're using the zigzag needle plate. So again, avoid that by putting your needle down first, butt your fabric up against it, basically. So the first stitch is going to come up and then in your fabric. So it's going to avoid that little jam that can sometimes happen, uh, especially again, depending on what fabric you have. So as I'm sewing along, and I'll just cut that thread, and then again, oop, there I'm on the thread cutter, convenient side thread. So here I'm sewing and look, I hung up my thread on that side thread holder. I didn't bring up my bobbin thread. You don't have to. Uh, now, when I started sewing in high school many years ago, <laughs> uh, my teacher suggested, oh yes, bring up your bobbin thread. And we used to hold onto our thread tails. You can totally do that. Again, that's how I learned to sew and no problem. Uh, again, you can hold onto them or hang them up here at that side thread holder and the back you will avoid that little loop and that little bird's nest that can often happen especially when you use your automatic thread cutter i get the question you know all the time and people say oh how do i avoid that little loop that little bird's nest uh and again unless you're top stitching or edge stitching oh it doesn't really matter like here in my jelly roll rug oh if it started uh if i had that little loop here well it doesn't matter no one's gonna see it but again if it annoys you or if you're gonna do top stitching like for sure you don't want to see that little loop so again you go back to kind of old school where you bring choose to bring up your bobbin thread if you wish or after you used your thread cutter and again, I just do this by habit, so I don't even think about it anymore. So I've used my thread cutter. And then, yes, that leaves us with this little thread tail. So instead of sewing right away, which can lead to that little oops, bird's nest. And again, see there, just that little loop. So if that loop drives you crazy, then just take a little bit. Here's your thread. Put it under your foot. Take, just pull a little bit and hold it up there. That's what that thread holder is for, actually, to eliminate that little bit. 
So just by having that little bit of extra thread. So go ahead and use your thread cutter. Just pull out that little bit of extra thread, like it's okay. And then that way you're not gonna have that little jam and you're not gonna have, again, that little bird's nest. So look at how beautiful that is. So, so simple, so easy to do. So other little threading tips and tricks. Uh, as usual, my time is flying. I just wanted to show you, oh, things like a good resource to check out. Oh, can you see on my computer? Oh, there, I can zoom in now. <laughs> uh, to Genomi Global Site. So on your computer, uh, type in your browser, Genomi Global Site, and then scroll to the bottom of the page and it will say Janome Bulletins and you click on the bulletins and that's a great resource for new uh, presser feet, new products, things in the Janome line to help you specifically. So when you scroll through, look at all the bulletins. Now I print mine all out and I put them in a special red binder. <laughs> so titled bulletins. But this one in particular, look how cute that is. Janome bulletin of your special spool holder. And there shows you, again, how to use it correctly. Uh, don't put it like the little crown where it could get caught. Or again, it shows you when you invert your medium spool cap, it doesn't always fit the other way. So using that special spool cap can really make a difference. So again, you can find out these little tips and tricks on the Janome Global site. Type that in your browser. And then again, scroll to the bottom for the bulletins tab. Now also, as I bring it into frame here, let's not forget we have the fabulous, ooh, can I shrink it now? <laughs> we have the, whoops, ooh, the fabulous, there I am, okay. Uh, yes, we have the fabulous AccuSpark app uh, for the Continental M7, and then we have the AccuAssist app for the CM17. And here is my online instruction manual in the AccuAssist app. And specifically, it's page number 29 that gives you, again, some little tips and tricks about using your spool cap, using those little thread nets that come included with the machine. There are some spool and cone adapters that do come with the machine. But again, with your fabulous spool stand, you get more. Or, uh, here's a little tip, so again, about the special spool cap there. So again, all of that is built in to your AccuAssist app for your, in my case, iPad or again, my iPhone or your Android uh, device as well that you can use this. And again, all little tips and tricks about winding the bobbin and threading your machine. All of that is in your, oh, there we go. See how they're using the two-handed threading to thread your machine so you'll have always success. The only time I have not had success with that bobbin or with that uh, needle threader is, again, I physically <laughs> didn't, you know, move that thread over to the left, for example, uh, or again, I didn't have my take-up lever in the uh, correct position. There, they're suggesting, again, that side thread holder, and then at the back, it's a cutter. So, always and there take that little loop through so all of these tips and tricks are here in your AccuAssist app it's absolutely fabulous and again that is specifically the instruction manual again all on the global site but built in to the AccuAssist app so everything you need to know about your machine as far as again oh stitch chart info sewing preparation machine functions, everything, presser feet, it's all there. So how cool is that? Everything you need to know, selecting the needle, all of that. Oh, your needle plate. Why, look, they give you some little tips and tricks on your needle plate and where you align your fabric. So isn't that cool? So again, all of that is AccuAssist app. Available for your fabulous CM17, a free app, by the way. <laughs> so, yes, let me spin around here as usual. Don't you love having a clock 
in your CM17 because it lets you know, hey, when you're doing a live, you're going over your time. <laughs> so I love it. So thank you everyone so much for joining me today. It's fabulous to connect with you all here in the Genomi Continental Club and I will see you again. Oh, I think I'm back in a couple of weeks anyway. Uh, but yes, have a very fabulous weekend, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing the Genomi love and we'll see you again soon. Happy sewing. <laughs> Bye.